to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Who is a disciple? A disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of scripture a disciple is one who accepts and helps in spreading the doctrines of scripture when we follow Christ we follow him because number one we accept and we believe the truths are we together yes and then number two we help in spreading it so when the bible says in matthew 28 let's look at it now you will understand what the bible is saying matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 here's what jesus said to us matthew 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all authority the word power there is the word exousia authority all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 on the strength of this information go ye therefore and teach are you seeing now he didn't just send us to preach to preach means to declare to teach means to explain to guide to mentor to bring into comprehension that's what it means to teach go ye and teach all nations all nations does not mean all countries all fields of endeavors are we together now all of the mountains go there and teach baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you are doing this be assured that i am with you all way whilst you are doing this you can be sure that my divine presence is going with you even to the ends of the earth Colossians chapter 1, Paul speaking to the church in Colossae from verse 28 and 29. Paul, the assignment of presenting everyone. He says, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man that in all wisdom, we may present everyone mature or complete or whole in Christ Jesus. 29. He says, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his walking, which walketh in me mightily. Paul said, look, all my travels and everything, you see me visiting the church in this, the church in that, correcting all kinds of things, imbalances, impartations, travels, all that I'm doing is I am striving to see to it that the body of Christ and those committed to my care, that I'm able to present them complete in Christ. If you're still with me, please say amen. amen. So the course content for the believer's education is called doctrine every believer that comes under the influence of the doctrine of scripture will become something exact something predictable regardless denomination regardless the approach to ministry now we may not always agree in terms of our modus operandi we may not agree in terms of our personalities here and there but there are certain truths that are called the foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If you do not believe this, you are not a Christian. If you do not teach it, you are also not a Christian. There are certain things common to all women. Black, white, yellow, African, Spanish. There are things common to men. Regardless location, regardless territory. That's how it is. 
when we talk about unity unity is not uniformity no we will never be the same verbatim our experiences with god our levels of transformation the systems of mentorship that we are under will create those differences but regardless what the divide is there are certain foundational pillars of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection not laying again the foundations of six of them number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god verse two number three the doctrine of baptisms number four of laying on of hands number five the resurrection of the dead number six eternal judgment and he prays a serious prayer in verse three and this we will do if god permits there are foundational pillars please listen very carefully you see believers do not just grow because truth is taught truth has to be methodically arranged like a building to be able to mature the saints are we together now please don't feel bad don't feel insult insulted i apologize if you do so but then imagine with me for instance that someone just gets saved completely not a christian and the first message he hears is on prosperity you see chances are that that person's christian experience will be wrecked into pieces because he's not learned how to crucify the flesh he's not built character are we together now exposing that person to that body of knowledge the truth is not it is truth but it will kill him it's not sequentially arranged he's not even equipped for the attacks that come by reason of that level of blessing we must not just build believers we must build believers methodically line upon line truth upon truth tomorrow is sunday millions of pulpits around the world will be filled with men and women passionate men and women who will be teaching can we begin to make these adjustments by focusing on doctrine what we largely do is just a topical exegesis of the word and for many people i understand how burdensome it can be to preach and come up with messages so sometimes you sit and say ah what have I not preached for a long time in this church? I'm tired right now. I have three services. Let's try faith. All right? So you listen to a message or two. Just go online. Get one or two scriptures. Put things together. And you know the fearful thing about the grace of God is when you stand up here, it will look like you've been studying since last year. Because you are under the influence of that grace. That grace can cover shame in a tremendous way. But it's not an endorsement of your current state. You can stand and preach something off script completely. It may even be one of the most powerful messages you would have preached that year. And you'll go back repenting before God and say, Lord, thank you for covering for me. Me and you, we know that I don't have an idea of what happened on this stage. Come on, pastors. Do you know the reason why you fear teaching on the altar? Do you know the reason why you feel emotionally bullied by another man? Because you are teaching opinions. When you are teaching doctrine, the truths don't come from you. It is the explanation and the exegesis of it that comes from you. So there is no need to fear. The body of truth is exact. You finish and start again. Listen, when it has to do with the knowledge of God, our exploring God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll keep learning him. But as far as the excelling of a believer on earth is concerned, the body of truth allocated for our growth and maturity is finite. You can cover the curriculum and start again and not feel guilty for going back. It's not that you don't have new messages. So the pressure is that, ah, let my members not say there are people teaching volume 7 part 1 volume 8 part 5 and you are here it seems like you are struggling with something so that pressure pushes us into saying look what is the new thing i have not said save yourself that stress there is an exact body of truth that builds 
and provided that is what you are teaching no matter how simple find rest every other thing garnished on it is just the, the psychological prowess the intelligence and all of that but at the basic level everyone should be able to mature believers once you can understand and you can teach the course content is given to you already doctrine so there is no excuse there's no such thing as i don't have the gift of teaching i'm not really a teacher you know these guys are the ones who teach and then because of that we said you know what don't worry i even want to teach worship team come raise a powerful song let's start praying and then no 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 There are a few ministers around the world, this nation and across Africa. They teach in about the most simple ways. Sometimes annoyingly simple. But you look at the quality of men that they have raised. Do you know why? Because the content of their teaching is true. They are methodical about it. Whether the lecturer is in Uni Loring, whether it's a Yoruba lecturer, whether it's an Igbo lecturer, a South-South lecturer, a Northern lecturer, the person's accent, his level of understanding, etc. is not, it's not too much to alter the curriculum. So the same students can be taught by an Igbo lecturer, a white man coming from the US, a visiting professor from the UK, and then people within that region. And regardless the students, you are sure that after four or five years, you are going to graduate a predictable kind of people. Their accents may differ. Their abilities to explain. There are lecturers, respectfully speaking, who are quite on the conservative side. They can talk as if they are talking to themselves. Others are very engaging and happy. Those things are just added advantages. Once the truth is there, the students will learn and their results will show they have learned it. Fine rest, men of God. The pressure that we are putting on ourselves to attain onto certain levels. It is true that some of these gifts and some of these engracings come with um, a level of charismatism around it, I confess. So once these kinds of things happen, there is that, there is that drive to want to be celebrated, I understand but find rest tomorrow go on your pulpit and teach doctrine with power teach it with truth teach it with conviction when i was in the seminary when i was in the anglican seminary we had something called the apostles creed The Apostles' Creed, now I'm not, I'm not, I know that I'm speaking to people across different denominations, but I wish there was a way you could find for me and project what we call the Apostles' Creed on the screen. If you can find that thing, media, I promise to give you a big hug. That for me represents about the most accurate or at least commendably accurate presentation of the believers creed this is a summary of what we stand for this is who a christian is it's important we know that some of you here are owners or directors or senior executives around companies and you have all kinds of creeds is that true that you compel your staff to learn to indoctrinate them to understand why they are here whether it's a creed towards efficiency a creed towards excellence team spirit whatever it is please find it for me if you can i apologize for putting you under this inconvenience but it's important so we're dealing with doctrine and discipleship we are not in ministry truly if we are not teaching doctrine do the believers under your care, are they still in doubt that Jesus Christ is God? Do they know that? Hold on before we begin to teach all of the mysteries of this and that. Just calm down. Leave that. We're going there. Do our members know that Jesus is Lord? Do they understand redemption? Can we random pick 
take one member and bring him up stage and say give us your understanding about the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ which is the foundation you will be amazed at how many of our workers respectfully speaking deacons and even some of us men of God we may not be able to articulate redemption how about prayer how about faith the Bible says in this kingdom the just lives by his faith how about the body of Christ how about resurrection do our members know that Jesus is coming back do they know the benefit of being saved the reason why there are hardly altar calls on our pulpit is not because we are bad it's because we ourselves need a reorientation about the value the Bible says there is no other name given unto man under heaven by which we must be saved are we together what of the Holy Spirit do our members understand the Holy Spirit? Do they understand the priesthood ministry of a believer? Do they understand the responsibility that makes for kingdom advance? Thank you. Thank you. Let's give these people a big, big God bless you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, that right there is a very serious creed. I hope I'm able to see everything as clear as I want to. But let me attempt to read it. Am I boring you? This is a pastor's conference. I know impartation is coming, but you just pay attention. The oil is useless when there is no vessel. Remember, it is the vessel that gives credence to the oil. I believe in God the Father Almighty. It says, the maker of heaven and earth. Is that true? And Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. That is true. But I may edit that now because he's not the only son again. He was the only son, but now he's the first of we the begotten. You see that now? He's not God's only son now. Mm -mm. He was his only son, but now he's called many sons into glory. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. How shall these things be seen that you know not a man? It says the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified. Dead. It's important you know he was crucified. He did not just die. If he just died, he could not have been a curse. Because the law says, curse is every man who hangs on a tree. If he died on the ground, he would be a dead man. He needed to die on the tree. So the crucifixion of Jesus is a major aspect of the Christian life. He died. You have to believe he died. If he did not die, then there is no way he would have collected the keys that we gave Adam. Revelations 1, I was he that was dead and now he's alive and I hold the keys. It was his death that gave him the entrance. When sinners die, where do they go to? So the only way he had to go to hell, being a righteous man, was to become sin. So that if he died, it would now give him the, the entrance to go to the place of the dead. Are we together now? He died as you and me. What would have been our future? So he went there. And when he met Satan, the Bible tells us, Paul was teaching us, the, the drama that happened there in Hades. That when he got to hell, my goodness. Did you know that Satan did not even understand the strategy? When he died, all of a sudden celebration was to start in hell. And then they see this man. Jesus Christ went to hell without the assistance of the Holy Ghost. I hope you know that. He went as man in the strength of man. That's what made him the second Adam. He went there. And the Bible says all the demons and principalities were on him, forcing him to bow. What is him bowing? Acknowledging lordship. Because Jesus being the express image of the Father, the word. Are we blessed? This is what makes us different from different religions. There are many religions that teach what we teach too. This is the dividing line. Do you know why we need to restore doctrine to the body of Christ? Otherwise, after many years of laboring, we will not know who is a Christian again. 
and the devil is an expert he will keep bringing pseudo christian expressions until we lose the conscience it's already happening to many people so he went and when the legal claims of justice were satisfied the bible says he made a public show of them triumphing over them in it and he did not just stop there he now went to satan and he said give me the keys what keys the keys that came from adam through eve to him are you seeing that now and when he collected the keys the bible tells us that there were saints who were then abraham's bosom i don't want to bring any controversy but your bible people you know and apostle peter taught us that he went there and preached to them when he preached to them he gave them a chance to believe when they believed he opened the prison gates he said follow me when he resurrected it's in your bible he was the first begotten and then other saints came through the streets of jerusalem they saw them the hymn says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign i know it's old school but not every old school is old are we blessed so when he resurrected a woman came and met him this solves the problem once and for all should women be in ministry the first person to see Christ resurrected was a woman he says go and tell Jesus go and do ministry go and tell he's the one who instructed her go and tell There is a protocol to it though. The Bible always says they do it in subjection. But to negate, no, when it has to do with the ministry of the word, there is neither male nor female. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. It's one new man in Christ. Are we blessed now? Please pay attention. These are the truths that give you a defense system against Satan. The Bible says no weapon fashioned. Do you know what it means to fashion to fashion means to write a summary of your strengths and your weaknesses and build an arsenal from your weakness so when the devil wants to attack he does not just come he fashions the weapon what do you not know what is not known in your church oh you don't know this you don't know this build the weapon after this weakness it says no weapon fashioned are we together when jesus christ resurrected listen to me the bible says he was raised up for our justification what does it mean to be justified to be declared not guilty but his resurrection was not all there was if he was if he resurrected and he stopped there we are saved from sin but we are still in trouble because he needed to go to heaven to perform his high priestly duty remember he said no don't touch me don't corrupt the program I need to ascend to heaven so he went there both as the lamb and as the high priest the Bible tells us because according to the Jewish tradition the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement so for it to be an eternal atonement the ageless lamb he now became the lamb he used his own age now so for you to know how long the atonement is is to know the age of the lamb that died you see that now And when he was done, a coronation service was held for him in heaven. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. That was a coronation service. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Permit this mind to be in you, the Bible says, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who although being God did not consider it robbery, this and that, but that he died the death on the cross. And the Bible says wherefore by reason of this god had so highly exalted him and given him a name the name is an office he gave him an office and that office was exalted above every other name that at the mention of that name every knee 
Listen, if you don't know this, your members will not be powerful. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It's not what you are saying. It's the understanding that supports that activity that releases the power. Please, let me have four people. Just come. Let me use you. Four, any four gentlemen, come. Watch this. Just stand here. Look at this, everybody. Do you know what Jesus did? Just, just stand facing me. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Imagine that I am a PhD holder, but the limitation is that I have PhD alone. Are we together? And then my assignment is to make all these guys PhD holders, but they don't have the strength to go through that system. So what I did was I gave up my PhD. I went back to nursery school. Remember, I always had it. I went back to nursery school. And then I just told them, follow me closely. I started, come guys. And then when I now got to masters, just when I was going to write the PhD exam, I said, hold on, before you give me that exam, guys, everything I'm going to be doing is for us. I changed the name from me to us. Now I wrote that exam. The examiner did not even know what was happening. As soon as I got the PhD, PhD appeared on all of them. And I took them here. Come. I took them back to where I originally was. So you will ask, so you had PhD. Why did you leave it and get it again? Because of these guys. I had it alone. But I didn't want to have it alone. That's what Jesus did. Everything he now has, he always had. But the question is, alone. So he came back, gave up everything, and started afresh. This time around, with you in covenant. This is what Paul understood. He says, we have been raised up, and we have been made to sit back where he always was, but now together with him. Above, far above. Thrones, dominions, every name that is named. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. This is the gospel. Thank you. If you do not understand this, it didn't make sense for Jesus to leave the glory he had with the Father. Come back and get it back. Why do a coronation service? Was he not always Lord? alone this is where the love of the father is revealed please sit down what then is the gospel of salvation let me tell you the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son man being the zenith the object of that love alongside creation the law is that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have zoe is called not just eternal life everybody has eternal life what we're giving is not eternal life it was an error in translation eternal life means life without end everybody keeps living even after this world when you preach you don't ask people will you spend eternity the question is location they will spend eternity let's finish our apostles creed can we have it again the bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the word catholic there does not necessarily mean roman catholic it means the universal church if you don't believe the body of christ you will never have balance in your life there are four encounters you must have to be a balanced believer and a balanced minister. One, the encounter with the Son of God. Two, the encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. Three, the encounter with the Word of God. Four, the encounter with the body of Christ. I believe in the body of Christ. I believe in the communion of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection of the body. I believe in the everlasting life. This, for me, is a very fair representation of the believer's creed. There are many other expressions of it across different ministries. But I'm saying that we need to return back to doctrine and discipleship. Don't just ordain people because they have stayed long in church. And you say, just keep watching. Prepare for the next 
because of course i know that we need more people we need to send more laborers but we have to be careful this is the reason why we continue to send people who have not been worked on on the spirit and after one two years they keep causing us pain because they carry their flesh and their limitation and they now impede the work that you've invested so much in hallelujah we have to pray we've not even done church growth i promised us that we'll do church growth unfortunately we may not i'm not sure that we may have that time but can i just run through four keys to church growth please be patient i know that we have service many of us need to go and prepare the key to church growth is found in mark chapter one mark chapter one now there are different there are different perspectives when it has to do with church growth now that we understand that we should focus on the exegesis of doctrine our experiences and our personalized dealings can only just be support systems but we must return to the doctrine of scripture that builds that matures that makes mark chapter 1 let's begin our reading from verse 21 please mark chapter 1 and verse 21 we are learning the principles of church growth by studying the ministry of jesus himself be patient as we read ready the bible says and they went into capernaum and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue help me and so keep that in place we're studying jesus now he entered the synagogue and the bible tells us what he did there he taught we see teaching as part of the key next verse and they were astonished at his doctrine so we know what he taught what did he teach doctrine pay attention we're piecing together the keys that make for church growth irrefutable keys that will work for anyone regardless ministry regardless what dimension of the fivefold you're involved with the bible says for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes next verse please the bible says and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit take note now this is church and the bible says and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with you jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him so we see jesus casting out demons 26 and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him as a result the bible says and they were all amazed how many were amazed please talk to me there are certain things that when they happen on earth men can never commonize them it is not given to men to trivialize certain manifestations of the power of god it will always compel people to know that god is at work in a place follow carefully they were astonished among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him take note we're studying jesus now what happened immediately please look up believers and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about galilee so here is a man who came in as an individual into a temple he did certain things and by the next day the whole city is talking about him we're talking of growth here the principles and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue he entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john 30 and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they take him up. Uh -huh. and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left and she ministered unto them now you watch this the difference between this miracle and the one that happens in a crusade ground is that this is happening among church workers we are examining the key to church growth 
It is easy to preach in a crusade and have wheelchairs stand up. And your workers are saying, we've not experienced this thing ourselves. He came to Peter's house and the same power worked there. Do you know what it means for your workforce to believe in you? To know that this anointing does not just work for strangers. This grace also works here. It is on the strength of their conviction. Everyone who comes, he knows that you are not just acting. 32. And at evening, when the sun did set, hallelujah, they brought unto him. Don't ask people to come. Find out whether you can do something about what they are coming with. They brought unto him. Would you love members like this? Brothers and sisters, these are the kind of members we are calling. Do you love members like this? Lord, I want increase. Get ready for these people. These are the kinds of people coming. Are we ready? Number one, all that were diseased. Number two, all that were possessed with devils. Don't think God is just going to send made people. Oh no. You want increase, you must be ready for work. These were the people who came to Jesus. 33. And the city, hallelujah. You want the city to be gathered? Let me describe how the city looks for you. There are a few intelligent people, there are a few wealthy people, and many sick people, and many broke people, and many confused people, and many angry people, and many jealous people, and many possessed people. And the Bible mandates that you welcome them. Could there be a reason why increase is not coming? It's an act of God's mercy and warning to you. You really want this? Are you prepared? 34. Look Jesus now. He healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. And cast out many devils. And suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Be patient with me. We're almost there. The Bible says and the impact over those people were so much. In the morning, what a man. How would you finish such a spectacular crusade and have the gods to go back and leave people and pray? I show you the secret to church growth. Can you enjoy such fame and such glamour a few hours earlier and have the audacity to go away from all the press men and leave everybody and say, I'm going back to where the power came from. I wish we had time to walk these things. I'm just summarizing. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. A world that loves to be celebrated, to be seen. Will you have that time? When people come for a crusade ground, a crusade and there are wheelchairs, crutches, will you still be able to go back and say, Lord, your boy is still here. I'm not confused. You used me, but I'm still here again. 36 and simon and all they that were with him followed him when you have results people will do what you do and when they had found him they said unto him may this be your testimony all men you've heard me say it there are things when you carry only the rich look for you there are things when you carry only the poor look for you there are things when you carry only the educated look for you. There are things when you carry only young people look for you. There are things you carry only the older people look for you. But there are graces when you can get in the place of prayer. All men. All men. Including your partners. All men. Including your helpers. Including your lieutenants. All men. Including destiny helpers. All men seek for thee a few more verses and we're done and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that i may preach there also so we see preaching for therefore came i forth next verse he preached in their synagogues throughout all galilee and again we see him repeating it he casted out devils uh-huh and there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down before him saying unto him if thou wills thou can make me clean read on please the bible says and jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said to him i will 
be thou clean next verse and as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed and straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away 44 and said unto him see that thou say nothing to any man but go thy way show yourself to the priest offer for your cleansing the things which moses commanded and for a testimony that man was too grateful to be silent next verse but he went about if it is a genuine miracle not even your humility will stop people from letting the city know jesus begged this man and said look i i know what the crowds would do but the man was too grateful he began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in the desert place and they came to him from every quarter in the name of jesus christ from today by the power of the holy spirit from all over this city everywhere people must come to to hear the counsel of the lord in your life i call them forth in jesus name dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko Tobre Kateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.